This video will explore the formation of standing waves on strings. We will begin with a discussion on how standing waves can be formed when a wave is incident at a boundary. We can then examine the different standing waves that can exist on strings under different boundary conditions, such as strings with two fixed ends, two free ends, and one fixed end and one free end. Let's first consider this animation. Here, the orange wave moves towards the right and is incident at a fixed end of a boundary. This produces a blue reflected wave with a phase difference of 180 degrees, traveling in the opposite direction. The superposition of the incident and reflected waves forms a standing wave shown in black in the animation. There are points on the standing wave that always have a displacement of zero, including this point at the boundary where the string is held fixed. These are called nodes and are a result of destructive interference between the two waves. Similarly, there are points called antinodes that oscillate with maximum amplitude due to constructive interference. We can see that the distance between two consecutive nodes or two consecutive antinodes is half the wavelength of the standing wave. Moreover, the distance between a node and an adjacent antinode is equal to a quarter of the wavelength. Now in the following animation, we have the same orange wave moving towards the right, but it is now incident at a free end of a boundary. This produces a blue reflected wave moving to the left with no phase change. Again, the superposition of the incident and reflected waves forms a standing wave, but this time there is an antinode at the boundary instead of a node. These are the guiding principles to how standing waves are formed on strings and in pipes. We will now look at standing waves on strings. Let's consider a string of length L with two fixed ends. A wave that travels in one direction towards one fixed end of the string will reflect back from the fixed end and the standing wave will be formed. The ends of the string cannot oscillate, so any standing wave that is formed must have nodes at both ends. These are known as end conditions or boundary conditions, which place very specific restrictions on the wavelengths and therefore frequencies of standing waves that can be produced on a string with a fixed length. The standing waves formed on strings apply to string musical instruments such as a guitar. The longest possible wavelength of standing wave that can be formed is one where there is one antinode between the two nodes as shown in this animation. In particular, this standing wave is called the first harmonic and can sometimes be referred to as the fundamental harmonic frequency. Since nodes are spaced half a wavelength apart, the wavelength of the first harmonic, which we have denoted with a subscript 1, can be expressed in terms of the length of the string as follows. This wavelength then corresponds to a specific frequency, which is the lowest possible frequency of standing wave that can be formed. Since the speed of a wave is equal to the frequency of the wave multiplied by its wavelength, the frequency of the first harmonic can be determined as follows. This is also considered to be a natural frequency of the string, one of the frequencies that it will oscillate at when plucked. The next longest wavelength of standing wave that matches the boundary conditions of two fixed ends has three nodes and two antinodes, and this is known as the second harmonic. Here, exactly one wavelength fits on the string, and when we calculate the corresponding frequency, denoted with a subscript 2, notice how this is double the frequency of the first harmonic. As a side note, the waves on the string will travel at a fixed speed v, which is dependent on the tension of the string and the mass per unit length of the string. Therefore, these harmonic frequencies of oscillation are dependent on the physical properties of the string. We will now show the third harmonic, which has four nodes and three antinodes. Here, one and a half wavelengths fit on the string, so the wavelength of the standing wave is shortened again. And by calculating the frequency, we can see that this is three times the frequency of the first harmonic. We can now start to see some patterns emerging from the harmonics. All the harmonics have frequencies that are a positive integer multiplied by the frequency of the first harmonic, where n denotes the number of the harmonic. 
In particular, a harmonic is named by the ratio of its frequency to the frequency of the first harmonic. For example, this is the third harmonic, denoted by n equals 3, because the frequency of the wave is 3 times the frequency of the first harmonic. If we count the number of nodes and antinodes, we find that the nth harmonic will have n plus 1 nodes and n antinodes. So the number of the harmonic can give us the number of antinodes on a string that is fixed at both ends. Furthermore, the possible wavelengths of standing waves on a string of length L will satisfy this relationship. Note that these equations are not given in the data booklet. Let's apply this understanding to an example question. A string fixed at both ends vibrates at its first harmonic with a frequency of 250 Hz. Part A wants us to calculate the length of the string given that the speed of waves on the string is 200 meters per second. We begin by recalling this equation relating the speed, frequency and wavelength of a wave. By rearranging this equation and substituting the relevant values, we get a value of 0.8 meters for the wavelength of the first harmonic. A string that is fixed at both ends will have nodes at the ends of the string, and under these conditions, the first harmonic will have one antinode. Therefore, the first harmonic will look like this, where half a wavelength fits on the string. So the length of the string can be determined by dividing the wavelength by 2, giving us a value of 0.4 meters. Alternatively, we can recall this equation that relates the wavelength of the nth harmonic to the length of the string. By substituting n equals 1, we see that the wavelength is 2 times the length of the string, and so we would arrive at the same answer. Part B of this example wants us to calculate the frequency of the fifth harmonic. For a string with two fixed ends, the fifth harmonic will have five antinodes and will look something like this. Moreover, the fifth harmonic will have a frequency that is five times the frequency of the first harmonic. Since the frequency of the first harmonic is 250 Hz, the frequency of the fifth harmonic will be five times this, giving a value of 1250 Hz. The following case will be briefly discussed, where instead of having both ends of the string fixed in place, both ends are now free ends and are able to move freely. When the ends of the string are free, they must be antinodes. And again, this places very specific restrictions on the wavelengths of standing waves that can be produced. This animation here shows the first harmonic under these conditions. And the following animation shows the second harmonic. The harmonics look different, but we find that the wavelengths and frequencies of the nth harmonic follow the same formulas as the case for two fixed ends with the only difference being that the nth harmonic has n nodes and n plus 1 antinodes. So what happens when the string has one of its ends fixed and the other end is free? In this case, the boundary conditions will be a node at the fixed end and an antinode at the free end. This animation shows the first harmonic, where one quarter of a wavelength fits along the string. So the wavelength and frequency of the first harmonic are given by the following expressions. The next harmonic has two nodes and two antinodes. We can see that three quarters of a wavelength fit along the string. When we calculate the corresponding frequency, notice how the frequency of this harmonic is three times the frequency of the first harmonic. So this wave actually corresponds to the third harmonic. In particular, only odd harmonics of standing waves can exist on a string that is fixed at one end. We find that the harmonics follow a pattern where the allowed wavelengths and frequencies are given by these expressions, where this time n has to be an odd integer greater than zero. We will now provide a final summary of the key understandings from this video. Standing waves can be formed on strings due to the reflection of a traveling wave at the ends of the string. They have points of zero amplitude called nodes and points that oscillate with maximum amplitude called antinodes. The distance between any node and an adjacent antinode is equal to a quarter of the wavelength. 
A fixed end of a string has to be a node, as it cannot oscillate, while the free end of a string has to be an antinode. And these place very specific restrictions on the wavelengths and frequencies of standing waves that can be produced on a string. The standing wave with the longest wavelength and lowest frequency is called the first harmonic, and subsequent harmonics are named by the ratio of their frequency to the frequency of the first harmonic. For a string of length L that is either fixed at both ends or free at both ends, the allowed wavelengths and frequencies of harmonics are given by the same relationships. However, standing waves formed on a string with one fixed end and one free end will satisfy different equations. Furthermore, only odd harmonics can exist on a string that is fixed at one end. This now concludes our video about standing waves on strings. Thank you for watching.